What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to a very unfamiliar but yet somewhat familiar garage down here in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania where we are hanging out with Ryan from Pure Function. You can see right there on the back wall and his absolutely gorgeous Supra but we're actually not down here today to hang out with that. Rather, we're here to hang out with that. That is our new workbench slash kind of like mobile heavy duty surface that Ryan's brother Joey just fabricated for us. We drove down here really early in the morning just to pick this thing up and we're about to go through the uh, somewhat stressing process of trying to pick what is estimated at probably a 500 pound table up into the back of my 2020 Denali. So let's 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 see how this goes. The blood running through our core. It's best to not feel sorry when it's over. I will be the greatest that you ever seen before. And I'll say, it's a So we are loaded up and well, the, the dream team here got this job done. It was definitely heavy. We ended up having to pull my ton out cover off only because I didn't want a lot of the weight bearing on the multi-pro. Now they say that it's a nice multi-use tailgate, but I don't really think it's intended to hold anything other maybe than a few hundred pounds of a person when they step on it to step up. That was making me a little nervous. So I did end up pulling the ton out cover off so we could get another about 15 inches of room here in the bed. And now we're riding on a nice comfortable spot, pretty much right here at the front of the tailgate and I'm extremely winded. So guys, this is Ryan at Pure Function. He's got a YouTube channel, definitely go check it out. Ryan and I have known each other since we both basically embarked on this journey of YouTube, have been friends for a very long time. Both live in the same state, we just kind of live far away. So it's not like we get together all the time, but his brother-in-law, Joey, actually came through and fabricated us this really badass table. It's constructed of, what are we looking at here, Joey? Is two this... by three tubing and two by two tubing. And then a heavy eighth uh, diamond plate flipped upside down. On all the shelves. Then you've got these stitch welds. Yep. Uh, how do you like that reference yeah. for terminology there? Stitch weld all on the side. I mean, what do you think this thing could actually hold? I think this table can out outlive oh, these yeah. casters probably. You, you'll you probably get like 1,500 pounds out of the casters. You're, you're looking at at least 2,500 pounds yeah. for the construction. Dude, that's awesome. Basically what happened was when I was in search of a very nice workbench, I posted it up on Instagram. A lot of you guys messaged me and this happened to work out really well because these guys are local. I basically asked Joey to make me a workbench that would outlive me and then I can just pass on like multiple generations. I just wanted to buy one of these in my entire life and that's exactly <laughs> what I got right here. So hell yeah, big success. Anyway guys, this is Ryan's Supra and it's here beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, well, no, I'm complimenting it, I'm complimenting it. I did kick its ass in the quarter mile. I mean, is that what you're waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> it's a 13 second Supra, I got it. <laughs> funny, funny. But in all reality, it is absolutely beautiful. It is on completely different setup now versus the last time that we raced, which was over two years ago. Yeah. At this point in time, I had the Mini Max and the Mini Max wasn't really even anything special at that point in time, I don't no, think. No, the Corvette was a big thing then. You were dealing with tuning issues. You're working yeah. through fine tuning things and of course, as you guys know, you know, tuning is everything on a setup, but now the setup has changed considerably. So quick rundown, what are we looking at here? Uh, S369 AM Infinity standalone. Just make it easy. It makes 900 wheel horsepower. It makes 750 foot pounds of torque on a stock engine, but it has a built head, powerhouse racing turbo kit, four inch exhaust, I guess diesel exhaust as I call it, T56 Magnum, built rear end, triple A tires. I mean, nothing's really left. Besides the bottom end being stock, everything's been touched now. Dude, so it, it's fun it, and it's fast. This is super goals here, man. I absolutely love this car. And as you guys know, as a truck guy, you all kind of see that like big diesel kind of genre and content, but I actually started with cars. I had an Evo 10 back in the day, which we used to yeah. talk about all the time. That was like FP Black, it made, I don't know, 500 horsepower, ID 1000. Wall like all that good stuff. Like it made a ton of power. I had an S2000. Like I actually started from the JDM roots myself. So when I get to see a JDM icon like the Toyota Supra, man, I can't do anything but just appreciate it. Well, you can't not turn it on now. You have to. Well, oh, of course. I mean, it's a little bit early in the morning, but uh, we're doing it for the block. We're doing it for the block. Standing here might be a bad idea. Ah, very moderate. Very moderate. It is chilly this morning too. Beautiful sound to hear. 
the morning, man. Wow, guys, look at the ass on that. The R88s and that massive five-inch exhaust coming out the end. It looks just so good. Ryan has done such a phenomenal job on this car. The Supra Turbo, come on, guys. I mean, everything about these things is just so iconic to the 90s generation. But this is really where cars started. I mean, the tuning era originated here. The turbo sounds, the, oh my God, just everything that's associated with power. Boom. To see something that's still drive-by cable, you just can't beat it. And the color combinations of powder coating that he did in this bay, it's like so much, but so little at the same time. It's amazing. So go give Pure Function a follow, both on Instagram and YouTube. Ryan is such a good dude. Another Pennsylvania local. And uh, man, it's great to connect. We're hoping to put on another racing event here at some point once coronavirus decides to get the hell out of here. And Ryan will probably be there attending. Well, I think we actually have a race that's already kind of set up between what will be a 1,000 plus horsepower Cummins. If I can beat six cylinder, brother, come if on. If I can beat five truck, I'm like, I'll probably that'll be it. That'll I, be I, it. I think I'll probably get you from a day. But you're making 900 horsepower on a Super. I mean, that's like no joke. And you, are we talking quarter mile here? True quarter mile then? Like no, one, no oh, eight mile. Yeah, well, eight mile too. Either way is fine. I'll go quarter mile as well though. Oh, quarter mile. Because it'll be inline six versus inline and six. And that's what, what, what's a, what size engine's in the comments? Like, five nine. Oh man, that's gonna suck. If I give you five truck, man. I don't know guys, what do you happen. think? So comment below, comment below. It's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. It might happen, it might happen. Well, I'm feeling the heat. I'm out of here. We gotta go, we gotta go. Now, but in all reality, guys, you can look forward to some content here coming between the Supra and 8-Ball, probably later this year once 8-Ball is already in rock and roll and tune and everything like that. But anyway, guys, we gotta get back on the road. Let's do it. This thing is absolutely intense. We've got one of the caster wheels locked up right now and it barely even moves. The plan with this table is to replace that table and then this table is gonna get relocated somewhere else. I'm not really sure yet. And as you can see, we've got a really full shop today. So we gotta kind of make some room. What were you about to say? You're shaking your head over there? We need a bigger shop. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that awkward moment when you run out of room in your brand new shop that you've been in for two months. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of the plan for the table. I wanted to bring you guys along down to Ryan's. I'm really happy we have this thing. It is so freaking solid. I mean, like we'll be able to basically survive pretty much anything we ever throw at this, I hope. 40 inches off the ground too, so it makes a super, super nice working height. And we've got good depth so we can actually stack stuff on there. And being that it's only 84 inches wide, we do have perfect fit for the 96 inch piece of wood that is right there. And you wonder why you have a bad back. That was proper form. That was all with the legs. I don't know what you're oh talking about. Oh my God, dudes. Dudes, this guy over here. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here's the plan for today. We're going to make some room in the shop. We're going to jump right back into working on the 2020 High Country. In today's video, it is more disassembly, but we're dismantling suspension stuff. So we're going to take apart pretty much the entire kind of front assembly here. Lower control arms coming off, upper control arms coming off. Welcome to GM's coding. It is oh. disgusting. Unlike the Ford, the knuckles are coming out. And then on the rear side here we've got some dismantling required for the receiver and then we are taking off the rear diff cover rolling start now guys at this point in time there's only two weeks remaining for dream diesel giveaway number 10 so if you guys haven't gotten your entries yet i know you're part of that procrastination nation but new limited products are live right now check out enthusiast first link in the description below grab some entries because you're going to get yourself entered to take home that truck plus ten thousand dollars cash Man, if you up here, dude, there's not much that you can do to get above this thing because it sits so high but boys we achieved it this morning hell yeah and you know what as i sit here and think i uh, i think we're also going to have to take off those side steps today where do we start, dude? Easy stuff or more time consuming stuff? Oh damn, I was kind of thinking the latter. Yeah, nah, truck's up in the air. We're starting with the easy stuff. This update, we did a trailer hitch receiver delete. Well, not permanently though. That's actually gonna be going back on. It will be headed over to powder coat though. So that's kind of majority why we are taking things apart today because these parts will be, did I just have food on my mouth? I think I did. 
I was chowing down on some pretzels with peanut butter. Man, those things are good. But like I was saying, these parts are actually gonna be headed out to powder coat. So receiver is out, differential cover is off. There are actually no differential covers that are made for the 2020 quite yet. So we decided to do something special with the stock one. Now, before we move over to the front end of the truck, I did wanna just comment on the ease of removal with this trailer hitch. I haven't had a chance to remove the LML uh, generation design trailer hitches, but I did mess around with the LB7, LLY, and LBZs. And these are considerably easier because there are no longer nuts uh, that secure it to the chassis. Rather, there are these nice welded threaded bungs that are right on the other side. So you got three on this side, three on that side. And then all you had to do is actually loosen the two front bed mount bolts and then remove the two rear bed mount bolts. We got a little creative. We put a piece of wood up there, used our handy dandy Atlas 12,000 pounder, and then basically just drop the truck down to lift the bed up a little bit. You're able to slide this entire unit out alone. It was really, really nice, super simple process, and it's going to look good in the color that we're getting it coated. So that brings us to the next removal process, which is everything right here on the front end. We got to basically we take some stuff out to get it coated and we got to make some room for some more stuff. We will be revealing those details in a later video, but today we got to just focus on tearing stuff apart. Let's get out of here. is being made ladies and gentlemen we have the passenger side front assembly completely dismantled upper control arm is out lower control arm is out torsion bar is out knuckle is out hub is removed caliper is hanging and this is pretty much what we're looking at on our literally brandy spanking new 2020 high country i'll tell you what this table isn't being wasted by any means we're putting this thing to use and you can see those shelves are coming in handy big time as we kind of try and keep as organized as we can in the disassembly process so the knuckle and lower control arm will actually be sent off to powder coat as well. But we've stumbled upon another hurdle and that is these bushings actually need to get pressed out. And currently we don't have the capability or means to do that in the shop. So uh, we'll be right back. We have our 12 ton hydraulic bottle jack. Kudos to Harbor Freight on this one. Should be plenty for our pressing needs. And small update on the driver's side. It is completely disassembled and we are doing our absolute all to stay organized. Pretty much everything over there and everything right here. Passenger side, first shelf, driver's side, second shelf. We've got our lower control arms, which are going to be our press culprit number one. We got to get all those bushings pressed out and prepared for powder coat. Our ready to powder coat pile is right over here, as you guys can see. Looks like our diff cover is dried and ready to rock and roll, so we can bring this on over this way. Drop that right there, and well, ladies and gentlemen, allow us to hopefully have a pressing success. <laughs> See what you did hey! <laughs> On a real note though, this table is amazing. Joey, seriously, bro, thank you so much. I don't know what I would do without this thing right now, to be completely honest. This kind of just accessibility in and of itself to be able to grab and go, it's a game changer, guys, no joke. For $140 plus Pennsylvania 6% tax, it did an okay job. I wouldn't say it's stellar. It's definitely not made extremely well, but it was able to get the end bushings out, but we were not able to press out the ball joints. The ball joints require a larger relief holder, basically a piece that we can put on the bottom in here so it presses the entire thing out. So looks like we're gonna have to run over to our boys at Advanced Auto and rent ourselves a ball joint press, hence the name. I was really hoping that our little... Eh, somewhat jerry-rigged solution would actually solve the issue but i'm sure that this thing will come in handy over time the press is actually good but everything else is very flimsy and then your actual press plates are your biggest bottleneck on this unit you've got four configurations if you marry them like this and you kind of get like a triangular 
or like a square, and then you've got small circles and then like large square. That's our biggest limiting factor right now because there's no simple way to rest the outside of that lower control arm within those relief plates to allow us to actually press the ball joint through. So that's kind of an issue that we ran into, not the end of the world. We're just gonna have to head on over to Advance and do kind of like one of their lease programs where you buy it on credit card for 170 bucks, but then they refund you 170 of those dollars basically to cost the tool. So fortunately, that's kind of something that is available to all of us. Chalk that one up to the ready to powder coat pile. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's honestly what I feel like doing with it right now because those bushings have been challenging. I'll tell you that, but we got the right tools for the job. And in this instance, that's necessary. Advanced, you guys are my boys. And these can go right over here in our ready to powder coat pile. We are just missing one component. Can you guys guess which component that is? And that is because, well, the components that are missing from here actually haven't arrived because yeah, boys, they're gonna be aftermarket. All righty, boys, today was a great day. We made considerable progress and our 2020 continues to fall into pieces. One thing we didn't get to today was the removal of the grandpa side steps, but we will get to that. It's not like the thing's going really anywhere anytime soon. So, you know, that's always that. We've got a super exciting video coming up on Sunday for you guys that you're not gonna wanna miss. A lot of you are gonna be really excited about this. It has something to do with, I would say like one of those uh, hidden secrets of the truck world and we are going to cut into it, literally. And you guys are not gonna wanna miss it by any means. It's gonna be something that I am extremely excited about sharing with you guys because it's gonna be the first time that we've ever done anything like this as well. It's actually right here on the bench behind me. Uh, we've got example letter. A and example letter. B. It involves two things. That's all I'm gonna say right now. It's a big step. It's a really, really big step. And I'm excited about answering some of the frequently asked questions regarding this topic. I'm excited to tell you guys how I found out about this thing. And I'm excited to show you guys where we're gonna take these things. So that's kind of where I'm gonna leave that for the time being. So we got a little bit of cleanup to do, but fortunately we've stayed relatively organized today. The teardown is essentially complete on the 2020. I don't think there's really much more that's gonna be coming off of it. Maybe a few things on the rear end if you catch my drift, but that will be coming in later videos. So that's pretty much where we're gonna wrap up at this point in time. We will be taking a trip over to the powder coater and down to Peach Bottom Auto Body as well, coming up here extremely soon. So we got a lot of stuff happening on this 2020 high country and I'm absolutely stoked about all the progress that we were making with all of you guys. And thank you so much for all the positive feedback lately. I really appreciate it, guys. So that being said, my like league, I love you guys, do what you do best. This truck right here might have your name on the title. If you choose to get entered, just consider that, sleep on it, you know, maybe make a decision in the morning. You know, you don't want to rush it, but it is sitting right here. And believe me, you're going to look really good in it with $10,000 in your pocket, center console, under your bed, bank, wherever you decide to put it. That's not my business to know. But anyway, I'll see you all in the next upload. Where's your finger at right now, dude? <laughs> we got to go. Tell me